Hi there. Welcome again to Wave Hill's Bird of the Day segment. Hopefully you've seen some of other video clips uh, with our other birds of prey. Our last owl in our owl section is going to be the largest species of owl in the world called the European or Eurasian Eagle Owl. He's actually impatiently waiting in his box. You might be able to hear him calling. And what I'm going to do is see if we can get him to fly out and join us on his own rather than simply take him out of his box. One of the things that's always interested me about the birds is the way that they perform differently in the wild when catching prey. Owls tend to fly quite slowly. They don't need a lot of speed and tremendous athletic ability to catch prey because they have something that the daytime birds of prey do not have, the element of surprise. They're using camouflage and silent flight. And when they spot the prey on the ground, they drop on it quietly. If the prey could see or hear the owl coming, it would escape on the ground and make their job much more difficult. So silent flight is very important. And the lower they are to the ground, the closer they are to be able to see and hear the prey. Uh, I covered the hearing earlier on a segment about the great horned owl. So if you want to learn about the hearing, check out that video. Here, I just want to give you an idea of how they fly. Their feathers are very, very soft. Basically, when a bird flies, if it flies close enough to you, the flapping you're hearing are all the feathers rubbing together on the bird's body. A bird like this owl, for example, has between four and 6,000 feathers on its body. So all those feathers rub together, they have a texture, feathers make noise. But the owl's feathers are extremely soft. Also, when a bird flaps its wings, the leading edge of the wing cuts through the air rather violently and the air passes over that edge of the wing and creates turbulence, that's the noise we hear. But with an owl, the edges of the feather have fine hair-like appendages, almost like the teeth to a comb, fur or hair-like. So when that bird flaps its wings as hard as it wants, the air actually passes through the edge of the wing much more gently rather than over it violently. That allows much more quiet flight. So that said, we're gonna see if we can get our eagle owl to fly in. I've got a little piece of meat here as a reward. And I'm gonna give them a little encouragement using a noisemaker called a clicker. Being that they are attracted to sound and they learn what sounds mean in the wild, sounds mean food. I taught this owl from a very young age that this sound means food. So no matter where we are or what we're doing or whatever distractions there may be, when he hears this sound, he focuses on it and comes to it for food. So we'll give it a try. So there's our eagle owl. Let him have a little look around. And I'm gonna hold up my glove and... And he flies in very gently. Although he's a large bird, he flies in very, very gently and lands like a butterfly or a moth on the glove. He's just eating a piece of beef. I talked a little bit more about a complete diet in one or two of the other segments, so I won't cover that now. Just wanted to give you an idea of the way the owl flies. And he's having to look around, but when he hears that clicker, he focuses on it pretty quickly because he knows without a doubt that every time he hears that clicker, food is involved and there will be a reward. That noise that he makes is rather repetitious. Yeah. Talked about an owl's vocabulary in one of the other videos. That particular yeah. sound is a baby noise. Now it's a baby yeah. habit, if you will. Now he's probably 15 years old, so obviously he's not a baby, yeah. but he still has that baby habit. Basically, yeah. that's a sound that a wild owl would make in the yeah. nest as a youngster calling out to the parents. And yeah. when they're flying around and learning how to fly and getting experience, they'll call out to yeah. the parents. Mom, Dad, I'm here, I'm hungry, feed me. Well, keep in mind, this bird was bred in captivity and I've raised him from a very young age. I got him when he was probably 10 days old from a breeder. He was just a little bit of fluff. So from the time he was very young, right up until today, I always click the clicker and feed him some food. So basically, he looks at me as a parent figure. So he's constantly talking to me. He, he's imprinted on me. It's basically, he has a picture, a photo, an image in his mind of me as a provider. It's a working relationship based on food. 
Now, in the wild, once he was successful catching his own prey and he was independent from his parents, he'd stop making that noise. It wouldn't serve any purpose. It also might alert the prey to his presence. So it wouldn't be practical. He'd stop making that noise. But because all his meals come from me each and every time and he depends on me, he feels like he has to constantly remind me. So he makes that sound all the time. Literally the only time he doesn't make that noise is when he's asleep or completely stuffed with food. So one more little treat for him and we're gonna move on to our next segment with our next bird. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time.